Hi there. Uh, I'm going to boil some linseed oil today to make to be used to making violin varnish. Now there are some old recipes that go back to 1550 era. Uh, one from a guy called Alexis Piedmontese, 1550, called The Secrets of the Arts. And the other is Fioravanti uh, from Bologna, The Universal Mirror of Arts and Sciences, 1564. Now I've never seen these publications but they're uh, cited in uh, Heron Allen's book, um, so you're probably familiar with them. Uh, I don't know whether they exist but I'm taking it that they do and they say boil linseed oil till it scorches a feather. Well I've tried that and I'm not going to do it again um, because I've got thermometers which will do the same job and a lot less uh, dangerous. <laughs> um, so what you do, you get some linseed, raw linseed oil and you're saying well why don't I just use boiled linseed oil but that is entirely a different product to what we're going to end up with. What's known as boiled linseed oil in the trade is very rarely boiled, it's usually just got uh, the addition of some cold dryers, some uh, cobalt dryers or something like that to it and uh, it would be completely useless for our purpose so do it this way. Um, Let's see. Use a, a wire gauze for safety. Um, just protect your glassware. I'm putting a little drop of glycerin in there, just a little drop to act as a catalyst to uh, lower the temperature which this takes place at. Um, and uh, in goes the linseed oil. Trim that up. There's a, a load of sludge on the bottom which can stay there. Mm -hmm. And we need a thermometer which will go up to about, um, what's this one do? This one goes up to about 360 degrees centigrade. Does it make a difference what kind of a gas meter you uh, put it on? Uh, well, not too too strong. I've got it quite hot at the moment. Um, it wants to be brought up to the temperature, which I'll tell you what that is in a minute. Um, it wants to be brought up there fairly slowly. You don't need to boil it too hard. Just let it rise steadily. I'll uh, just consult me my notes and. Uh, It needs to go up to a temperature of four to five hundred degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, I've got the linseed oil in there and the thermometer. I've got a little bit of glycerine in it. Um, the temperature wants to rise about sixty degrees a minute, six degrees centigrade. So you don't need to have it too fierce. But a little bit higher than I've got there. Um, right now that's going to take a few minutes to get to 320 which is the uh, temperature where something will start happening. Um, I'll say we, in the old days they used to heat it till it burnt a feather because they didn't have a thermometer but we have thermometer so we can do it a bit more controlled way. Um, there's not much uh, to say about it at the moment it's just going to heat and, and when it gets to the critical temperature then there'll be something that happens to it which we'll try and see. And, uh, right. Okay. Back in there. a few minutes then. Back in a few minutes. <laughs> right so this is the, uh, the oil at what, what temperature is it at the moment? We're now at um, 123. 123 so it's becoming cloudy but it's still not moving around very much. All right. Okay, we're uh, about 10 minutes later, we've got to 200 degrees centigrade and not much change so far. Um, the oil is still looking turbid, quite dark in colour, nothing happening there. Um, a little bit of yellow foam on top but only a little bit. Um, 
but around about 220 degrees it does something that might start to happen so just remember what it looks like now and we'll show you it when we get to okay we're coming up uh, 320 degrees centigrade um, and just an odd bubble or two starting to come up in, in the oil not too many yet but uh, they are starting to appear and we aren't very far off the uh, break as it's known the uh, transition went when all the uh, stuff that's in the oil which is not good to be there will start to separate in. it's uh, just going over 220 now and there's you still see small bubbles coming in, in there and there's big ones occasionally like those and we're not far off at all uh, what's going to happen is uh, there will be a like a spawn like mass of, of something starts to form in there and uh, as well as the bubbling the, the colour gets lighter, it, it kind of bleaches out the colour to a lighter shade. Let's uh, give it a little stir. Two twenty five. Around about 240 degrees centigrade now. Yes, there it is. I don't know if you can see it now. Can you see the? There's like a flocculescence, like uh, somebody's put some uh, down in there or something. Yeah, can you see that? That's. I'd like to come across in if you uh, sort of focus on the thermometer. Can you, can you, you see can see the. Uh, can you see it in there? The it's, junk in front of it. <laughs> it's uh, definitely changing now. There's something floating about in there. That's the break, and we're at uh, 240 degrees centigrade. Now, once you get to that stage, you don't have to do anything to it other than turn off the heat and, let, and wait. Um, don't be tempted to put any resins or anything in there to dissolve using that heat, because uh, you want to be able to get rid of that stuff, which you won't be able to do if you dissolve anything else in there. Um, this is one of the reasons why commercial oil boilers don't like to do this, uh, oil refiners should I say. There, there are two other ways of doing this. One is heating uh, it with an alkaline solution and the other is heating it with an acid solution that will remove that. Um, but they don't like to do, do the heating part because it's more expensive. But we can do it on a small batch. Um, now, the more you keep heating it, it won't re-dissolve that substance, nothing will happen, it will just start to burn at the surface and, and that's the stage where if you put a feather there that would burn, but it's a bit dangerous. So I'm not going to do that. Um, so, so don't keep heating it, it won't do you any good other than make a bad smell 
and probably set your house on fire. So now we can turn that off. We're just going to leave it. Um, I'm going to, when it cools down, I'm going to pour it into a clear bottle like that one, and uh, and then leave it for a couple of days. And by the magic of uh, science, and that's what you, you get after a couple of days. That will settle out of the uh, oil, leaving a beautiful clear oil above it. So that's that's one I've done, and that's uh, that's another one that I did, and that'll come down after a couple of days. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but one's got twice as much as the other, so depends on on the uh, quality of the oil you're starting out with, I guess, and how it's been uh, processed. Um, right. So that oil, when it uh, been settled to clear it, it will be uh, possible to reheat that oil, pour it off the sediment and, and you could make it into stand oil or whatever. Um, but I don't recommend that, I, I like to leave it thin so that you can mix resins in it and they will be spreadable without uh, needing, well you might need a little solvent, we don't really need too much because the thin oil helps it uh, spread. Okay, that's all for now.